Um, thank you. Um, so um, for those of you who were um, at the previous talk, um, you saw how to, um, to build a JIT, uh, just-in-time compiler, uh, from the ground up. Uh, in this talk, uh, I guess uh, we're going the other direction. We um, will be starting from a finished product, a complicated uh, piece of software, PyPy, and uh, we will um, try to uh, figure out uh, how it, um, uh, how the JIT inside it uh, works. So, uh, about myself, uh, I'm uh, Ronan Lamy. Um, I've been a um, uh, PyPy coder for uh, about seven years now. Um, and, uh, well, and uh, before this talk, I uh, actually didn't uh, know uh, that much about the JIT. And um, for me, it was um, it was a magic black box. And uh, I uh, well, by preparing this talk, I started to open it, and I want to uh, show you how you can uh, open it too. So um, let's talk about uh, PyPy first, uh, and um, the way I like to introduce it is uh, by a quote by uh, uh, from. Um, someone uh, whose name you might know. Um, <clears throat> if you want your code magically to run faster, you should probably just use PyPy. And that's, that's the goal of PyPy. Run Python code faster. Um, so um, nowadays, um, PyPy is um, full um, and fully compliant uh, implementation of Python. Um, we have, and we've had uh, for uh, several years, a complete uh, uh, support for uh, Python 2.7, uh, and we will continue to support um, 2.7 for, um, well, for an indefinite uh, period. Uh, we um, <coughs> also, um, uh, we've also released um, uh, a version that supports uh, Python 3.5. Uh, we have um, uh, beta support for 3.6. It's not fully um, complete yet. There's still a few um, things in the standard library to, uh, to implement, but uh, we, should, um, um, we should have um, a full release of 3.6 um, in uh, the not too distant future. I don't want to give a date, but um, this year. Definitely. Uh, and, um, well, uh, of course, the main draw to, uh, uh, to PyPy is uh, that um, it, uh, it can be much faster than uh, CPython uh, when uh, running uh, pure Python code. Um, I don't like to uh, give exact numbers because it's, uh, it depends a lot on the kind of code you're running. Uh, some code can't be... Uh, can't really be improved uh, above what uh, CPython does. Um, but uh, for um, uh, other sorts of code, you can have uh, huge speed ups and uh, it can um, uh, be a game changer in terms of, uh, of uh, order of magnitude. You get from Python speed to more or less uh, C speed. Um, and so, uh, and uh, of course, that is all due to the JIT, which we'll um, uh, talk about in a few minutes. Um, but um, just want to remind you that uh, pure Python code is not the uh, uh, the only thing we care about uh, when we use Python. So PyPy also has a um, um, good story for um, um, C code and. Uh, all sorts of um, uh, programming languages that speak, uh, uh, that have the same uh, interface, interfaces as C. Um, so um, the best way to, um, to, um, to talk to a compiled language from PyPy is to use uh, CFFI. Um, it's uh, very, uh, it's, uh, it's convenient in general for uh, the, the whole uh, Python world. Uh, also on, uh, on CPython, but uh, on PyPy, it, uh, CFFI is particularly well optimized and works well with the JIT. Uh, but um, uh, of course, uh, in the um, 
uh, Python world, we can't get by without uh, supporting all the C extensions, so uh, things like uh, NumPy, scikit-learn, uh, Cyton. Uh, so uh, PyPy has um, um, uh, an emulation layer to, um, uh, to support all these uh, extensions. Uh, it, um, well, it, it's annoying for us because uh, we could run code faster if it was written in Python instead of being uh, written in C. Um, but anyway, we have the, uh, the compatibility. There's um, a site uh, where we, you can get um, binary wheels. Uh, they are not yet on PyPI, so that's why you have to use this, uh, this repo for now. Um, and um, yes, and um, with that, um, uh, I think PyPy offers um, good, uh, very good compatibility for uh, everything you, you'd like to do in Python. But um, that's not um, the main point of my talk. Uh, I'd like to uh, <coughs> uh, show you the, uh, the internals of, uh, of PyPy and um, uh, and specifically of, uh, of the JIT. So uh, let's talk about the internals of, um, of PyPy first. And um, I'll start by comparing it with uh, CPython, which uh, uh, most of you are probably more familiar with. Um, <clears throat> so in CPython, well, it's uh, written in C, as the uh, name uh, indicates. And um, <clears throat> Once you compile the sources, you get an executable that has um, two main components. Um, first, you have the, uh, the compiler that takes your Python code and transforms it into bytecode, and uh, the uh, interpreter um, proper that um, actually uh, runs the bytecode. Um, in PyPy, well, it's, um, in PyPy, it's quite similar. Um, the, diff, uh, the first difference is that uh, the language uh, is different. PyPy is implemented in something called uh, R Python, which is a um, subset of Python 2. Um, and um, with the um, uh, R Python toolchain, that is uh, something that was built by the PyPy project um, in order to um, uh, transform the source code into the uh, PyPy executable. Um, look, so uh, thanks to this um, tool chain, um, you get the uh, PyPy uh, executable, which has the same um, um, bytecode compiler as uh, CPython, uh, which has a um, um, bytecode uh, interpreter, which is uh, quite similar to, uh, to uh, CPython. But um, it uh, also has um, the JIT, so, um, which is uh, the part uh, on, uh, um, on the right uh, on this um, diagram. So um, what, uh, what the JIT does is that um, at, um, at runtime, it um, takes, um, uh, well, it uses runtime information to uh, optimize the code uh, that uh, the interpreter is currently running. And, um, uh, and uh, it produces uh, machine code, uh, which is uh, a lot more efficient than uh, interpreting uh, bytecodes uh, one by one. And um, it can uh, switch back and forth between uh, the um, uh, interpreted and the um, uh, assembler running mode. <coughs> Um, so, um, this, uh, let's talk a bit about the tool chain. Um, <clears throat> the, um, uh, so the start is uh, R Python code. Um, then the, um, the, uh, the object, the, the code, uh, is uh, imported at the, at the Python level um, and um, by the tool chain. And then uh, the tool chain analyzes this uh, Python 2 um, code and does um, um, type inference and um, uh, various things to um, uh, reach um, uh, a stage where um, 
the, the whole code for the interpreter is uh, represented as uh, control flow graphs. So these are, um, well, it's a, uh, it's a graph of all the uh, operations uh, that happen um, uh, inside uh, the interpreter. Um, and then from, uh, from that uh, representation, um, the, uh, the tool chain uh, adds um, the garbage collector, uh, adds uh, the JIT, uh, and then um, transforms it into a C code which is uh, compiled and at the end you get uh, the uh, PyPy executable. Um, so um, I've, um, I tend to, to explain this uh, quite often. And uh, then the, um, uh, the next part of the conversation goes a bit like this. Um, what about the JIT? Well, it's just um, complicated. It's magic. Uh, but, um, but um, someone uh, who's uh, uh, actually um, a PyPy co-developer uh, recently said, uh, if you spend enough time with it, any magic is just uh, careful and clever putting of bits together. So um, let's uh, just um, spend some time with the JIT and, um, um, and it won't seem as scary anymore. So um, to do that, um, we have to, um, to run some code. And um, I have um, well, a somewhat stupid example, but well, it has to fit uh, on a slide, so uh, it can't be that complicated. Uh, and the idea is that um, you have uh, like a, a library for working with physical uh, quantities. And a physical quantity has, uh, uh, you have a value and you have a unit. And then um, when you um, uh, do operations with these uh, quantities, you have to um, uh, look at the, um, um, the unit and then uh, do the actual uh, operation. So um, for simplicity, we uh, only uh, implement uh, addition here. And, um, and we just check if it's the same unit because you don't want to add uh, meters and seconds. And uh, if it's, and we don't want to bother about weird things like feet and yards and, um, and um, if we have the same unit, uh, we just uh, return a new um, object that represents the, uh, the addition of the two. And um, since um, we uh, were interested in uh, performance, in um, what, uh, what the JIT uh, can do with um, such code, uh, we have a simple and rather stupid benchmark where we just uh, add uh, these um, quantity objects uh, repeatedly for um, um, five, uh, 500 million times. Uh, so that's quite a lot of operations, but let's, um, Let's see uh, what um, um, what PyPy can do with it, and what the JIT can do with it. So um, I'm uh, here. I'm in um, uh, a PyPy uh, three uh, virtual env. So I just run time Python on my file, and it takes less than a second. So. Um, well, that's a very, very crude benchmark, so let's run it like twice to see if it's stable. Oh, it apparently is. Um, and, uh, well, let's compare with um, CPython to, um, to get a feel. Shouldn't be too long now. All right. Well, yeah, twelve seconds. Okay. Um, so, well, twelve times faster. That's that looks decent. Um, but um, actually, I cheated. 
in reality, the code has a slight addition to uh, what I just uh, showed you. So uh, on CPython, if you, you can see uh, down at the back, at the bottom. <laughs> yes, I'm running uh, 1,000 times uh, less, 100 times less iterations on CPython because I didn't want to wait for the whole talk for it to return. So uh, on that uh, specific example, uh, PyPy actu is actually uh, more than 1,000 times uh, faster than uh, CPython. Um, and, um, well, it looks uh, quite um, magical, but um, I'll remind you that this is um, still just uh, when you're running on, on PyPy, uh, it is uh, just uh, like regular Python. You can interrupt it in, in the middle and you'll get a trace back. Um, you can, um, well, you can even uh, run it uh, under PDB and uh, interrupt. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to run. No, I want to continue. Yes, and uh, here I've started um, running the program under PDB and uh, I've uh, interrupted it, so now I can inspect. And I'm, uh, so self, let's inspect the value. So we are at the uh, 418 million uh, 53,951 th uh, iteration of, of the loop. And uh, we can still do whatever we want with the PDB. Um, uh, and, uh, but despite having all the power of Python, this uh, run in uh, just uh, one second for 500 million iterations. So, um, well, uh, let's uh, try to figure out um, uh, how this happened. Uh, and um, the first thing, uh, the first level um, we need to look at is um, the same as you would do in, um, in CPython. Uh, we uh, uh, can, uh, we should uh, first look at the uh, bytecode. Um, because that's what the interpreter uh, actually sees. It doesn't see the, the raw source code, it sees the bytecode. And um, it's, uh, so let's import our code. I hit runs again, but let's see. Um, and uh, to inspect bytecode, there's a very uh, simple uh, tool, uh, which is uh, this. And if we, uh, look at the compute function. Um, we can see it's bytecode. Um, so um, I, um, well, I won't be talking about, about bytecode too much. I hope uh, most of you have at least seen something like that before. Um, but um, this, um, uh, in this bytecode, you can see the uh, interesting part, which I'll try to highlight. So this, uh, which I've uh, highlighted, is um, what uh, is the code for the loop. Uh, and it's actually uh, pretty simple. I mean, and you've seen in the source code, it's just a uh, plus equal. So um, in bytecode, this uh, turns into, um, uh, mostly the uh, in place add bytecode with um, a few operations before and after to um, put things on, on the stack. Uh, the the bytecode language is a stack based uh, language. Um, so you, you put uh, things on the stack and then uh, uh, every operation uh, pops things from the stack and puts uh, the results back on the stack. Um, so um, let's now um, have a look at uh, this uh, in-place uh, add bytecode. Um, and um, 
it's, uh, this is, uh, well, the um, slightly simplified um, source code for um, the, uh, the in-place add bytecode inside uh, PyPy. Um, the real, well, the real thing is, uh, does uh, exactly the same thing. It just has more meta programming that obscure the things. And um, since uh, the uh, implementation uh, for uh, PyPy is uh, a Python, then, well, it looks like uh, Python 2, so we can uh, easily read it. And um, the way it works is, uh, so first it takes um, uh, values from the stack, um, as I explained, and then it does, a cal it does a calculation, at the end it pushes the result. And so what is the actual calculation that happens uh, inside the interpreter when you do uh, plus equal? Well, first, you look up um, dunder I add um, on, um, on the object, on the um, uh, left object. And then, uh, then there's something complicated, which doesn't happen in our case because we didn't uh, implement uh, dunder I add. So um, th then, uh, since we don't have dunder I add, we fall back to doing uh, the same thing as uh, simple addition. So um, then uh, addition is, uh, addition proper is more complicated because you have to um, check the types of uh, both arguments. Then um, you look up um, dunder add on the uh, uh, left argument. And then, uh, in certain cases, you will uh, look up uh, dunder r add on the right argument. But as it happens, uh, in, uh, in our case, we are, um, uh, we have, uh, our two objects are of the same type. They are of this uh, quantity um, type. So we end up here, and then, uh, we just call this um, uh, dunder add method, which we've looked up on the type. Um, so, um, now, Now if we want to, um, to go deeper, we have to um, actually talk about the JIT because um, this is um, pretty, um, pretty much the same logic as in uh, CPython. So um, the magic um, happens uh, in the JIT and so um, let's um, talk about uh, first um, how the, uh, about how the um, PyPy JIT was uh, designed and um, the, um, the JIT in PyPy is uh, what's called um, a tracing JIT. Um, and um, the ideas uh, uh, behind a, a tracing JIT is that um, first, um, and well, I guess it's the idea be behind the old JITs, um, you um, consider that um, most of the time, uh, in your code is spent in uh, very few lines. Um, so uh, you, uh, with, uh, uh, if you compile just in time, uh, you can compile only a small part of your code and get larger performance uh, uh, benefits. Um, and uh, the um, other important principle is that uh, when you have a conditional in your code, uh, in most cases, you uh, pretty much only ever take one of the branches. Like, um, uh, as I uh, showed you in uh, the uh, in place add bytecode, you uh, need to look up for the dunder i add uh, method but um, we didn't implement it in, uh, in our user code, so this uh, check will always uh, fail, and we will always fall back to uh, doing just 
an addition and not the special in place uh, addition log logic. So, um, <coughs> um, so um, the idea is that we should, um, so first we compile only the, um, uh, the hot loops, the parts uh, of the code where we see that the program that is currently running is spending time. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, we should also uh, optimize for the, the fast path, so try to, um, uh, we can assume that um, in most cases we only have to consider one branch of an alternative. Um, and uh, of course the, um, um, the one thing that uh, gives an advantage to a just-in-time compiler over ahead-of-time compilers is that um, with a just in compiler, you have, you know what you are uh, running on. You are at runtime, you, you have seen already the user code. So um, uh, it's uh, easy to, op it's easier to optimize uh, for what the uh, user wants to, uh, to run. And um, therefore, um, the, um, uh, the JIT works uh, well, it traces um, the um, uh, the code. So um, the um, uh, to uh, to compile some optimized code, uh, the first thing is to um, trace one uh, iteration of uh, of a loop and um, to um, so to, and to record all the uh, operations that were made in uh, that uh, iteration of the loop. Um, and that way you can include uh, runtime information that um, um, in, um, in that trace. And um, <clears throat> once you have uh, the trace, then you, will, uh, you can optimize it. And, uh, but you also need to, um, to add uh, what is called guards to um, check that the, uh, the conditions under which the trace was recorded uh, are still valid. Um, and um, finally, uh, an important idea in, uh, in PyPy is, to, um, uh, is that because uh, Python is so uh, complicated, because one byte code like in place add can do so many things, uh, it's, uh, it would be very hard to trace at the uh, Python level. So uh, to, um, to simplify the, um, the implementation in PyPy, we uh, want to trace the, um, what the interpreter does. We want to have a, a record of that uh, uh, implementation I, uh, I showed you and uh, try to run that and um, as a side effect, uh, doing that, um, doing that um, allows uh, the, the JIT to stay in sync with um, the interpreter. Um, so uh, the way to record um, the, um, uh, uh, what the interpreter does is, uh, is called uh, JIT code. So um, to, um, uh, create those uh, JIT code. Um, well, the first thing is that uh, the uh, implementation of, um, of PyPy contains uh, hints that tell the, uh, the tool chain where, um, where things can be JITed, where um, you can uh, you have an opportunity for optimizing loops. So that's called um, JIT driver. And uh, the uh, main one, of course, is um, on the, uh, the main um, uh, bytecode dispatch loop so that um, uh, you know to that when you um, start, or actually when you uh, jump back to the beginning of a loop, you know that you can start jitting under certain conditions. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, and then uh, the, um, 
the tool chain uh, just uh, follows all the code that is reachable from these uh, JIT drivers. Uh, there are uh, hints, like the decorators, like uh, uh, don't look inside that uh, uh, can um, modify the, um, uh, the lookup of, uh, of the code. Um, and then you have um, uh, things like uh, Elidable, uh, which um, allow uh, certain uh, optimizations by, s by telling uh, the JIT that some uh, function is, um, is a pure function in the sense of functional programming. Uh, so, um, it's um, referentially transparent, if you know what that means. Um, and um, therefore, you don't need to run it again. Um, and there's uh, also, you can also declare some um, uh, attributes of um, uh, certain uh, objects as uh, quasi-immutable so that um, it means that the JIT will assume they are always constant, but uh, they will um, um, they are, they can change, but the JIT assumes assumes they don't change. So um, uh, with all that, uh, the um, the tool chain just converts um, this. Uh, the internal uh, representation of, um, of the interpreter to this um, uh, format that is uh, um, uh, easily, that, that is optimized for um, uh, size. Um, and um, if you, um, uh, and, um, then, uh, when uh, tracing uh, what the um, uh, interpreter, what the JIT does is that it, um, it uses the JIT codes and interprets them, actually. So it's, uh, during tracing, the uh, PyPy interpreter is running on top of another weird interpreter that runs these JIT codes and uh, records all uh, its uh, operations. Um, so, uh, while it does that, it um, records um, guards. Um, so, the, um, um, the guards are uh, usually simple check, but uh, they need to, uh, there are uh, the conditions uh, that, um, when the, the guard fails, there's a, qu a slight complication because the, um, um, the code needs to exit the uh, optimized uh, path and fall back to the interpreter. Um, and uh, there's also a different uh, sort of, um, of guard which um, where you uh, assume that s something is true and uh, if it isn't, then the whole, um, uh, the whole trace is uh, thrown away. So that um, uh, you don't need to check uh, the guard when you execute um, uh, the trace. So that's um, very efficient. And um, I'd like to show you uh, what those uh, traces look like. So for that, I'll use um, VMProf. Um, it's um, a statistical profiler, but uh, most importantly today, uh, it can um, show the um, um, the traces, um, and to use it, uh, you just uh, you have um, this VM prof that uh, you can um, uh, install, and um, it records um, profiling information and JIT information, which you can then visualize. Uh, uh, on uh, a server, here I'm uh, running locally. There's also an option to run it in the cloud. And if I open this, hello, ah, yes. So here's um, what um, the JIT uh, records when running um, our code. Um, 
And um, you can see here in the uh, in place add, there's a whole lot of operations. Um, but um, um, yeah, and you can see that there is this um, quasi uh, immute uh, operation uh, right here, um, which is um, um, the uh, which comes from a, a lookup on uh, the type, the type object. So that's what the uh, I guess that that one is the lookup of the uh, I add um, method uh, on the object, and it's uh, quasi. It's recorded as quasi-immutable, so that means um, the JIT won't have to, um, will in the end not have to worry about it. Um, so let's go back to the presentation. All right. So uh, once we have uh, traced um, uh, the, uh, the raw operations, there's um, important uh, optimizations that allow, um, um, that reduce the number of operations because, well, that was a huge lot of operations. So uh, you have classic um, uh, compiler optimizations. Uh, there is, uh, uh, um, it can check for um, um, the values of uh, ints uh, in order to remove, for instance, um, uh, index checks on array access. Um, it removes the, uh, the guards that um, uh, are useless or are implied by other guards. Um, and uh, there is an important, um, the most important op optimization is um, virtualization. So uh, when uh, objects are, uh, don't escape the loop, or when they uh, don't um, usually escape the loop, um, then they don't need to be um, created at all. Um, and they will um, uh, only be created um, uh, on demand. And that way, um, it, uh, you remove allocations, which are uh, very uh, expensive uh, operations. Um, and uh, another important operation, uh, optimization, is uh, unrolling, which um, where you, um, instead of uh, optimizing one loop, you, uh, op you first run one iteration of the loop, and then uh, very often in, um, uh, in loops you have things that are always the same. You have basically loop invariants. So by running this first iteration, you compute all these things that stay constant. And then you can have uh, a second um, iteration that doesn't need to repeat these um, loop invariant uh, operations. And that uh, second um, iteration is what is uh, actually repeated all the time. Um, and after that, um, uh, the, um, uh, the trace uh, and the, this uh, sequence of operation is passed onto the different backends. So every um, uh, architecture needs a different uh, backend. Um, <clears throat> and uh, well, that's uh, where you actually uh, emit the assembly. And it's um, relatively, um, um, relatively simple compared to um, um, to the rest of the JIT. Um, <clears throat> and um, in the end, you just have uh, for each um, operation uh, a simple uh, uh, assembly to emit. So um, let's, sorry, that's not here. Let's have a look at, let's have a look at the final result. So, first, when you re, uh, after the optimization, here we are, uh, sorry, wrong one. After the optimization, um, 
So after, uh, without unrolling um, in this in place add, you see that there are still a lot of different operations. Uh, but uh, in um, <clears throat> after all the um, optimizations uh, after unrolling, uh, this in, in place add has removed all the all the checks on the different types. It has removed um, the um, function call. Um, <clears throat> it uh, and um, well the only thing that is left is, um, I think, incrementing the, uh, the loop counter. And uh, you can see the final um, uh, assembly that is generated. Um, it, uh, well, it fits right here. It's only uh, about uh, 10 um, uh, assembler instruction. So um, that's um, why it is, um, very fast. Um, so um, let's uh, let's conclude. Um, first thing is that uh, this um, on this benchmark, uh, the JIT is uh, quite uh, unreasonably effective. It, uh, it, man it somewhat uh, fortunately manages to. Um, remove all the operations, which makes a big difference over uh, what um, CPython has to do. Um, but uh, more generally, um, the, um, the way the, the JIT works is that there are, um, the um, tool chain contains uh, a generic framework that um, is uh, pretty much Python agnostic. Um, and uh, in order to um, get the, um, uh, massive uh, performance benefits you've seen, uh, the uh, interpreter needs to exploit uh, the, uh, the features of the, um, the tool chain. Um, and um, <clears throat> together, uh, well, together they give you uh, abstractions for free. They remove uh, uh, most of the overhead that comes from uh, using a dynamic language. Uh, like uh, Python. Um, <clears throat> so, um, if um, you want to um, know more, uh, you can um, contact us uh, on IRC. We like IRC. Um, just um, <clears throat> an announcement. We'll have a help desk uh, tomorrow morning, and um, uh, we'll be at the sprint, so um, come talk to us. Um, and um, hope we have time for a couple of questions. Thank you. Thank you. So we have time for one, maybe two questions. Anybody, please come to the microphones. Hey, uh, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, so I'm gonna ask some kind of a mean question, mm -hmm. but uh, so in practice, sometimes I've seen uh, PyPy behave like slower uh, than CPython. Uh, and so yes. we, are, we are often shown this kind of canonical example of a for loop, uh, yes. where PyPy uh, does so much better than Python, and yes. that's great. Um, but I think it would be useful also uh, if you could point to some, um, I don't know, pathological um, coding patterns uh, in which PyPy would perform slower because of some overhead that are present that are not present in CPython. Uh, um, well, it's, um, it's always hard to find the... Um to really understand the, the bad cases. Um, but um, basically the bad cases uh, tend to be uh, when um, the, um, the JIT is uh, unable to, to remove the, uh, the overhead. So um, <clears throat> here um, the, um, um, for instance, if you have um, uh, dictionary access that's um, uh, that is somewhat slow um, and uh, here the, the performance was very good because all the dictionary uh, access could be removed uh, because the um, there's this um, um, quasi mutable uh, 
mechanism for uh, type objects. Uh, there's um, I didn't really talk uh, I didn't talk about it, but there's uh, an optimization for uh, instance attributes as well. Um, but uh, sometimes you disable that, and then uh, the performance uh, suffers. Uh, that's very interesting because actually uh, my test case uh, implies a lot of direct um, dictionary access. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe it's tricky. Yeah, but it's well. Every case is a bit different, so I yeah. can't really give a general answer. Okay. So uh, if you have any more questions, please uh, find uh, Ronan and the PyPy guys at their help desk or the sprints. And thank you again. <laughs>